Okay, my friends, extremely serious topic today, and I don't want to make light of it. I'll probably make some jokes about this, but it's not a joking matter. Innovation in science is on a decline, and we're not sure why. Well, I am certain why. I know exactly why, and it's not on the decline. It's on a dismiss. The rate of groundbreaking scientific discoveries and technological innovation is slowing down despite an ever-growing amount of knowledge. It's because of the pushback by peer review. They won't allow knowledge anymore. You see what he says? He says there's emphatically, convincingly documents show this decline of disruptiveness across all major fields of science and technology. That's because of peer review. He's a postdoctoral student at University of Minnesota. He called disruptive discoveries those that break away from existing ideas and push the whole scientific field into new territories. They won't allow it anymore. Okay, they're saying why doesn't anybody get any new science? Well, I tried to present this to uh, Fermilab and CERN and all of them years ago. These are the particles we found, exactly the same particles. And they do exactly what they say. One's a fixed particle and one of them is just a, a, a Bernie particle. And they asked for questions and I did talk to Don Lincoln many times. Uh, and uh, he blocked me from uh, discussing anything because I just had too much evidence. And this is what happens. They don't want to lose their status. Okay, I just showed you the particles from Don Lincoln of our Fermi lab, the black and the red one. Well, we have black and red, black and green, black and blue. And this is what they can turn into as a photon as light accelerates and we can actually see the particles as they start to gain energy. These are the same particles he saw. This is what they call a gluon. That's another gluon. They're just nothing more than bar magnets. And they will end up in our venturi actually separating, which is fission and fusion. If these came apart, that's called fission. Do you agree? Yes, you do. And that is fission right there. And when it comes back together, that's fusion. Do you agree? Obviously you do because we separated them and they came back together. In the meantime, what do you see here? You see raw electron showers. What are electron showers? Raw energy. Shown this many times. In the nuclear bomb blast, the first thing that hits is the white. Next comes the black. The black is a bomber. It takes the house down. First, just the house just fumes up like that and then the house smashes down. Now this is breakthrough science. Not allowed. Okay, so what have we here? Well, we have a bomb that's going to explode this house, a nuclear bomb. What are my claims? My claims are that there's electrons that will surround the dark matter, which is the muons. I have seen this in space. The Russians did this. I sent that to Don Lincoln as well, and he dismissed that. Now, what will happen is when this house burns, the first thing that will hit is going to be the the white particles because they surround the black. Then the black will come and smash the house down. The white particles have no mass. They just burn. The muon dark particles have all the mass and no burn. This is what I would like to see tried and see if we can use this burn energy because we can separate. I show you we can separate it or I have shown you the black stays this side and the white goes through as a shower. We can direct it right onto a substrate and harvest all that energy. And when you see this energy, you're going to see what I'm going to, you're going to see the energy we want to harvest is going to be right here and it's going to be the first thing that happens is just burn. All right, this is the new model, very simple, nothing exists except those two particles. And what is a, pro a proton made of? 1823 of them. It's positively charged. It wants one more to become a neutron, which is neutral. That's all it is. They're all dipoles, and they're, every one of them has, it's like a little bar magnet. And when you have 1823, it's not even. Even 1824 makes it a, a, an even number, so it's not attracting, and it's not wanting to give one up. Now let's watch this house explode. Don't forget, the first thing's going to hit is the white particles, which surround the other ones. The next thing's going to hit is the black. Okay, this is teapot apple 2 
Adam Central, and they're going to blow this house up. Now, they're checking out to see what's going to happen. You'll see everything just vaporize, but nothing moves, and then it'll explode, because the white particles are hitting first. All right, you ready for this? Atomic bomb, blah, blah, boom. You're just going to see just brilliant white. Now, this is quite slowed down. So you're going to see a brilliant white flash, there it is, and all you're doing is seeing it burning. Nothing's moving. That's those white particles that I showed you attached to the black. Now we'll come to black after all that just vaporized off. There it goes. Now watch, it'll all be pulled back because there's either a void back there that it has to return to or the dark matter is the gravity pulling it back. And here's how I can say the things I say. Here's the particles I showed you before, which they're accelerating dividing, coming back together. Muon neutrino, electron neutrino is a Dirac neutrino. They separate sterile new, uh, muon and an electron shower. All right, this is the Dirac neutrino. The white and the black are stuck together. Two of them back to back make a photon. All right, now, they in outer space will be stay separated themselves. You see the glowy ones out here and the black ones in the center? That's what an atomic bomb is. The black ones are going to blow all those white ones out first, and they're the ones that burn. Then comes the black, which is just nothing more than bowling balls. This is not an empty space here. This is filled with the dark matter. And that's where dark matter and gravity is right there. Just so you know, this is Cornell, and they've been doing some pretty good research. And this is showing measurements of smartphone sensor efficiency to measure cosmic rays, muons. That's exactly what we're doing. And they say it, the, these efficiencies are vital to understanding the feasibility. All right, these CMOS is the best there is, and and this particular phone that we were using was a Galaxy Samsung uh, S3. In the selfie side, absolutely unbelievable number of pixels apparently, and very very good quality pictures. And now the CERN is using the same thing, CMOS. They used to use, like, magnetic pickups and all this stuff to see what's going on. But then they interfered with the field effects, which made everything go crazy. That's what's called the observer effect. As soon as they'd observe it, it would go crazy because they were putting more energy in or taking energy out. They were jumping into the fields. All we're doing is watching what, it, what fuses out of there. We're not affecting the interaction whatsoever. So you can see the blue and the green are the same particle, they're just much faster and more powerful. The red is very, very lazy compared to these. Alright, so one last time. Fermi particles, the ones we saw, this is acceleration, fission, fusion, it's all there. Now, let's see what happens when an atomic bomb goes off. You know, before we get into the book and all that business here and my claims, this is my most recent claims and how I can prove what I'm talking about. I just, as I showed you, I have this was my final paper and I realized that there was no going anywhere talking to anybody about this dipole theory. But this goes back a very, very well. It goes back to 1968 and so And this is all about stuff that I did and this was where I came into the magnetic properties and then I came into these two types of intermolecular forces, dipole and dipole interactions. That's all there is. Some of them are polar and some of them are nonpolar. The transfer of energy is from light to atomic vapor. And I said, therefore, Rutherford's atom was wrong. And I went through, this was in the beginning of quantum, really. Nobody really knew much about it. They still don't. Because they, they can't take the understanding that everything is a dipole. So, I'm, you know, I'm just going to switch through this real quick, but I did a lot of this. I mean, a lot. So, if somebody thinks that they're up, one up on me, well, good for them, because they are not. I did uh, all of this, and I did all the chemistry, and I did all the, all the experiments, all the light energy experiments, and spectroscopy, and everything. So, don't tell me, I, you know, somebody's got more education than I have. And I also did, I went to uh, University of Geneva in Switzerland, I didn't go there, but I, um, I went online through Coursera, and I showed them my stuff, and they, they were pretty impressed, I thought they were very impressed about this, 
and they said they'd follow me on Facebook. Well, I've been thrown off of Facebook, so I can't be followed, and I can't get to talk to anybody anymore. All the people I used to do research with, I can't, I can't even get to them anymore. They don't even know, basically gone. Okay, so what are my claims? In the book, they will be highly detailed, but here they're basically very quickly shown, and little doodles to to show what I feel is the true atomic model. And that is basically it, and that is it right there. Between those two, you, you've got it. Now, I get into a lot more detail because obviously that's, that's not the end of the story. However, what is the story? The story is the only two particles that exist are the ones that they show at Fermilab, the black and the white one. Uh, I believe I showed you that.